welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Savannah. I am the owner and operator of Pause and Relax, Mobile Pet Grooming, and Reiki Services. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to my most popular video back from 2020. You're seeing some of it right now. This is the first time I have re-watched the video since posting it. And I'm also going to be addressing some of the comments. So if that interests you, please stay tuned. And yeah, let's jump into the video. Testing the sound. One, two, three. Currently... This video has 281k. It was uploaded May 31st, 2020, and it has uh, 415 comments, 6.8k thumbs up, and I don't have it turned on that you can see like the thumbs down. So we will skip the ads in a second here and get into the reacting. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to show you Miss Dixie's full Look transformation. She is. This is her before. Usually she's not this overgrown, but because of COVID, her appointment got pushed back some. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video right now. I know lots of the comments. So this was like full blown COVID, May 2020. So I had to close down my business for a little bit when COVID first started because A, I was newly pregnant and I was scared of getting COVID. Nobody knew what COVID was. Um, I don't remember what the A and B thing was. My brain is like so dead today, you guys. Millie did not sleep like at all last night. I closed down my business for a while even though I started it in um, November 2019. This was May 2020. So for a little over a month, I completely shut down. So this is her like over a month overdue. Okay, correction. I had to go off work for a month. So then I had to rebook all of those dogs I had for that month. And then I had to fit her in the next month. And basically what I was saying here, but that I messed up was that everyone was like, she shouldn't be in this bad of shape because of COVID. But everything got so pushed back and they only do her twice a year. So that's why she was this furry. So right now I am just using a dematting comb and trying to get out as much undercoat as possible. A lot of undercoat. Now, as you can see, her fur is orange and that's because it is bleached by the sun. She should be a dark color all over. Um, I'm gonna pause this for a second. Also, I had never anticipated on making this like a full length video because this groom took four hours. I didn't wanna spend a lot of time doing like setting up shots and whatnot. So I did time lapses for this and then I had to slow down the time lapses in places and basically it looks like it's shot through a tube sock. <laughs> like I hate that the quality of my most popular video is not good at all. Um, Working so on her mainly bum using here. A Usually I have right to now. shave parts right in her inner thighs and bum because she gets matted in there. I will mention that she is an acreage pup and I usually do her two to three times a year, but okay. she is definitely overgrown. Mm -hmm. This is all packed in winter fur. Yes, yes. Okay, so usually springtime when an I would do Dixie, she would be really packed with fur like this because she has so much like winter undercoat in her. Also, I remember reading comments. Um, I haven't looked at the comments yet to pick out which ones if I'm going to respond to them. But I do remember reading some comments that were like, what is an acreage pup? And it's just like, it, it's a farm dog. Like, I don't know, it's another term that we use here for like a farm. So she has like lots of space to run and she's in and out of um, fenced areas with horses and donkeys and like all that stuff. This okay. is, this took about four hours and you are going to see this all sped up in about four minutes time. I think that's another reason why this video became so popular is because you can see a big hairy dog like this done so quickly and you're only spending four minutes of your time watching it. Okay, so this is all the fur after that's just doing a pre-brush out on only one side. This isn't 
this is not all of the fur out of her. Of this. Just one side. The angle of this is we're going to be moving awful. on to the next side now. Um, I didn't have a tripod at the time, so I was just trying to set my phone on like ledges. And also, I didn't want to waste a lot of time because I knew she was going to take a long time to groom. Also, I do want to say that I have done her before where I actually don't do any of this dematting. I just pop her in the bath first and then I try to blow out a lot of this undercoat. And I think it goes faster that way because I have done her before and I think sometimes two and a half hours, for sure sometimes three hours. This is the longest she ever took. And I think it's because I wanted to try this different method of getting out her fur first, but I would get out all that fur and then even when I blow dried her, there was still a lot of fur that needed to come out. So I think it wasn't really necessarily a good tactic and lots of people pointed that out in the comments, but this is just the footage that we're working with. Um, I actually have not groomed Dixie since this because this was my last groom with her when I had my first daughter. I got pregnant with my second daughter right before my daughter turned one. So I never ended up going back to groom her. Um, I am hoping that they've seen a different groomer and the owners have reached out to see if I could come back, but it just hasn't worked out yet because I am not back to driving around being mobile. So just like the last side, I'm using a dematting comb and also a rake to get out as much undercoat as possible so I don't have to bath all of that trapped in undercoat. Saves time with drying. Yes etc. Okay, so right there I said that I'm brushing her out first so that I don't have to waste time um, bathing and drying all of that fur. This is a technique that I use on a lot of dogs when you have to shave them right down like a shih tzu that's matted. Like why bath and dry all that fur if it's just getting a seven blade all over? So that was my thinking about this, but with the dryer, just the type of fur that she has, it actually blows out really well. So in this case, it like didn't really play out for me that well. So mm -hmm. <laughs> just being honest. I'm also shaving her feet and her paws here. Also taking some length off of her legs. We usually like to leave her legs fairly short since she's an acreage pup. Now, you can't really tell what's going on here, but I'm shaving out some mats from behind her ears. Had to use a seven to get in there to shave out some large matting. The part where I'm shaving out matting, I still would do this every other time that I did her. And if I did her again, I would do the exact same thing. Anything that's super matted, I would get rid of first before okay, putting her in the so bath. Okay, so this is the other side of her brushed out before the bath. So cute. Crazy. Crazy. This is all the fur we got out of this side. We could make I think like, I would get, like two more dogs out of all the fur I've gotten off her so far. Such a patient girl though. Okay, so this part okay, I feel so like does she's not giving me a little bit of trouble. So I was pregnant in this video, May, so I was like still newly pregnant. I think I was just getting over morning sickness and like having to throw up in garbage bags in my tub. Um, but I just recently made a reel where this is slowed down. <laughs> I was trying to pull her into the tub. I was standing in the tub trying to get her to go in. Um, I had to lift her into the tub. I do not recommend this if you're pregnant. You should not be lifting things that are that heavy. Um, she's very good for every other part of the groom, but getting in the tub is not Dixie's thing. And I also couldn't get the owners to help me because I would often show up, they would pay me, and then they would like go to work. So I was alone. The downside to being a mobile dog groomer. Most of the time you work alone. We're getting in the tub, but we got her in here. I am doing a double shampoo on her and then also a conditioner on her, a deep so conditioner. That blue shampoo that I'm using is the Nature Specialty Dirty Dog Shampoo. I do not like the smell of it, but I save it for acreage dogs because it really does help try to get that gross farm type smell out. Although I feel like with Newfies, no matter what, they always kind of have that like dirty dog Newfie smell. Here she is after her bath, all wet, waiting to get dried. 
Okay, so here I'm going in with the dryer and also my Ferminator rake. This mm -hmm, really mm -hmm. helps me get out all of the undercoat. So I slowly go through every single section of her fur and get out the undercoat. I'm wearing a mask so I don't have to breathe in all that fur and dander. I still stand by this technique using the blow dryer and that Ferminator rake. I do not like the Ferminators that have like the blade on them, but this one is really good. Do I have one nearby? No, I don't think I do. Um, but I'll put my Amazon link for it. This next um, time-lapse clip makes me cringe so bad because there's like a dog hair in front of the screen and also it's very blurry, it's not in focus. Um, yeah, if I was to do her again, I think I would shave all the mats, put her in the bath, and then do the dryer with um, a de-shedding rake and see how much I can get out. I think I wasted a lot of time thinking that I was saving time not bathing the fur when I should have just stuck to what I knew letting her lay down and take a little rest because this is a long mm -hmm. process okay so in this her. clip she is laying down i remember seeing like the things that get ingrained in your brain i remember seeing comments saying like four hours is way too long for that dog to be getting groomed you didn't give her any breaks and i want to say like you're not seeing all of the groom she did get breaks. I also offered water at certain points in the groom because um, it gets hot in there with the dryer, especially as much dryer as I have to use to dry a new fee. And also another comment I remember reading is that they said she was slow to like stand up and sit down and how they felt bad for her. She has arthritis. Um, I don't believe she has arthritis. I gave her as many breaks as she wanted, let her lay down. And also, I think her slow getting up and down is because I have a small table. She, like, just fits on it. So I think she was just being, like, very careful not to, like, fall off the table, which is very fair. Something else I forgot to mention while filming this video to go along with people saying that four hours was way too long. There was also some people that said, like, I would have just shaved that dog. You should have just shaved that dog. This shouldn't have taken this long, etc. And I didn't shave her because she mainly lives outside and where I live it gets to like minus 40, minus 50 degrees Celsius with the wind chill here in winter. And while yes, technically you could shave a newfie, it ruins their fur over time and it's just not recommended, especially in her situation. So if I was to go back and she was in this type of shape every single time, she was very overgrown here, then I would talk to the owner and say, hey, she needs a better grooming schedule. We need to kind of tweak things, etc. But in my mind, there is not an option to shave her because of her lifestyle. Also, I say that I'm using a dematting comb in the video. I use it because it helps me get the undercoat out. Any areas that are actually matted to the skin, I did shave out. Continuing on. Shaving more out. Okay, so this is her all dried. What a beautiful girl. Okay, so now we're looking at her before again, and then I'm going to show you an after. So what I didn't show is trimming up her paws and her legs and her bum. Didn't get a shot of that, but this is her beautiful after, Miss Dixie. She did such a great job, and this was a four-hour groom in four minutes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next video. Okay, so it's editing Savannah and before posting this video I went through the comments again and there is one last topic I want to cover and this was by far the most commented thing the most asked question Millie is right beside me while I quickly film this before I post the video and that was drum roll how much did this cost what did i charge for dixie's groom and let me tell you it was not not enough let's get into that 
As I stated earlier in the video, often this owner would leave before I even did the groom, so she would prepay. And on this day, I had no idea that it would take this long to do. So I charged her normal rate and people pleasing side of me, never contacted her afterwards to tell her it took longer or ask for more money. So I believe I charged her around $230 without a tip. Um, these owners do tip very well. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but to give you perspective, I did a dog recently that took around four hours, was a husky, very furry type of dog, and I charged around $80 an hour, which came to $320, and then they tipped on top of that. But I do want to point out, you can't always count on people tipping. It is not mandatory. I find that most clients tip, but they also may not. So was it enough? No. Was even $320 enough for the dog I just did? Debatable. Let me, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. That was a fun watch though. I hope I didn't sound like I was just like defending myself the entire time, but give you guys a bit of behind the scenes. I admitted where I was wrong, but also like defended myself a little bit. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching until the end of today's video. If you're new and you haven't already, press that subscribe button down below. I encourage you to as I would love to have you part of my YouTube family and I do my best to upload videos every single week. Thanks guys, see you next one. Bye.